Let's consider another example that involves the case of concurrent forces. So here I have an object with weight W, and it's suspended by three cables shown here in green. Uh, there's a cable from A to B, A to C, and A to D, and we're told that the tension in cable AD is 924 pounds, and the, the locations of all the points A, B, and C are shown as indicated, so C is located along the, the z-axis at a position of minus 24, etc. And I'd like to be able to figure out what, again, the weight of the object is and also what the tensions in the cables A, B, and A, C are. So the dimensions are shown in inches here. And the way we're going to do this is, again, we'll start with a free body diagram uh, for equilibrium. And so if I, I'll start with the object here it's subjected to the weight W, which happens to act in the minus EY direction, as indicated. So EY is the unit vector in the Y direction. And then it's subjected to a set of forces. So I'll isolate the object from the cables. And so here we have the force in the cable going to D. I know it's magnitude, and I also know it's direction. Here we have the force in the cable going to C, and here we have the force in the cable going to B. So to be able to apply equilibrium to this, first I notice that I have a case of current, current forces. All the forces are passing through the point A, so I don't have to worry about some of the moments. And I do need to know expressions for all the forces, though, if I'm to develop a exp useful expression for the net resultant. So let's start with FD, so that's the force in cable D, it has a magnitude of 924 pounds. And its direction is given to me by the diagram. So it is pointing 45 inches in the y direction. It is pointing minus 26 directions in the x direction, so EX unit vector in the x direction. and 18 inches in the z direction and I need to normalize this so this is 45 squared plus 26 squared plus 18 squared so I'll give me the unit vector pointing along the cable A to D and if I look at the force in cable B I don't know what it is it has some magnitude but I do know its direction Again, it's pointing 45 units in the y direction, then 25, or sorry, 28 units, the units happen to be inches in this case, in the x direction, and it has no component in the z direction. And I have to normalize that to get a direction, so 45 squared plus 28 squared gives me that. And then the force in the cable C has some magnitude. I'll call that FC. And its orientation, again, is 45 inches in the y direction plus it has no orientation in the x direction and but 24 units. And that's a minus 24 in the z direction. So square root of 45 squared plus 24 squared. So that, that gives me the expressions for the forces and the, the other force w we have is minus w dy. Okay. So if I now sum the forces in the x direction, what I'm going to find is 900 and 24 times the x component of the unit vector pointing along cable D, so I'll call that EADX plus FB times EABX. So those are the two vector components that give me something in the x direction, and this has to equal zero. So just to be clear again here, this term here is EA 
D, this set of terms here is E A B. That set of terms there gives me E A C. So those are unit vectors pointing from, say, point A to point C. If I sum the forces in the Z direction, I'll have 924 E A D Z plus F C E A C Z. That also has to equal zero. And then if I sum the forces in the Y direction, I'll have 924 E A Y, or sorry, E A D Y plus F C E A C Y plus F B E A B Y minus W equals zero. So I know what the components of all the E vectors are, the unit vectors along the cable, so I can now solve my system equation. So I could start with, say, the first equation that tells me that F B is equal to 828 pounds. If I look at the second equation, I can solve for FC. And I find out that FC is equal to 642 pounds. And then I can use the third equation here, knowing what FC and FB are, and then I can solve for W. And I find out that W is equal to 2,025 pounds. So this is another example of the use of the special case of concurrent forces to solve for the equilibrium of a system and determine some unknowns about it. And I didn't have to worry about the sum of the moments being equal to zero because of the concurrency automatically taking care of that fact.